What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back to Talking Mets with Rob with some breaking news. About an hour ago, the Mets get an extra added depth piece arm in the minors, even though it looks like it's going to be a major league deal. I don't think he's going to start tomorrow. Most likely, it's probably going to be Jose Buto in game two of the doubleheader. But the Mets signed Julio Taran. And if you go back to the offseason, they were one of two finalists to sign Julio Tehran and the Baltimore Orioles did. But I think Tehran would have been a part of this rotation uh, for the Orioles if they didn't trade for Corbin Burns. And because Corbin Burns is a part of the Orioles now and they made that trade, they really didn't have a use. And then Tehran had a clause in his contract that he can opt out. and. A lot of people are going crazy about this. Like, it's not the end of the world. Like, you have to understand, McGill is hurt. Who knows when he's going to come back? Sanger is probably three to four weeks out. You need pieces and arms available just in case for more double headers. You got to remember, guys, we're going to Cincinnati after this. There might be, if you look at this, the weather in Cincinnati, it looks like dog crap as well. So the Mets might have a couple of double headers in a row with no off days. For the next couple of weeks until almost the end of April. So you got to have pitching depth. You got to have guys. Certain guys might not be ready in a rotation. Uh, you know, it, it might not be their 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 time up the pitch. You know, yeah, they, it would love to be Budo, you know, tomorrow, which it could possibly be happening. It could be Lou Casey five days from now or three days from now in Cincinnati. We don't know. So, and with the weather in Cincinnati, and even when you go to Atlanta, if you look at Atlanta's weather, they got hit with a bad, a uh, bad bunch of rain and bad wind over the last day or two. Their their forecast doesn't look good a week from now. So you have to understand that not only that McGill is out of the rotation, Seng is already out of the rotation. You could talk about Jose Buto and Joey Lucchese all you want, but. What if those guys go down? And what if those guys don't pitch well? Well, guess what? You need other guys that you can choose from that you have that depth in the minor leagues. That's what Tehran is here for. Tehran's not going to jump into the rotation and just be a, you know, fill McGill's spot. You got you to gotta look at the overall big picture in this. Again, we know Julio Tehran isn't that good. You know, maybe he'll have a little lightning in the bottle. Who knows? But this move is to protect the rotation, just in case of more doubleheaders to come over the next week and a half, where Cincinnati and Atlanta, if you look at their weather forecast, Cincinnati has been raining for five days straight. Atlanta just got bombarded with a ton of rain over the last day or two, and the forecast doesn't look good for Cincinnati or Atlanta when the Mets are in town. So you have to look at it that way. Like The Mets could literally have three doubleheaders Within a week and a half, you need about seven or eight guys just to fill those spots in the rotation, and you don't have McGill and Senga. That's the reason why that these types of moves are necessary. Now, it's not saying that Mike Basil is not going to get a chance, or Lucchese, or Buto, or even Tehran. But you, you have to understand, these guys are already starting to pitch in the minors. So if their day doesn't come up, you're not going to just throw them out there on a fourth day or, you know, something like that and then hurt them. So you got to look at it that way as well. It's a, it's, a, it's a good depth move based on the situation the Mets are currently in. Number one, they got two injured starters in their starter rotation within a week of a season. And on top of that, you already got a doubleheader tomorrow which I will be going to, by the way. And we get, and I got some sweet seats in the Hyundai Club, so we're going to have some fun there, I tell you that. Uh, hopefully the, the service, I think you can get Wi-Fi in those suites, so I might be able to do a little bit of a pregame while I'm stuffing my face and drinking some, uh, some, some, some drinks in the suite. I'm going with my coworker, so that's going to be fun. And, yeah, it's, it's just how the situation is working out right now. Yeah, Tehran's a 500 pitcher. Exactly. He, 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 you could do a lot worse. I mean, you could do Carlos Carrasco. 
Like, it, you know, it, you have to look at it that way as well. It's not about, you know, he didn't pitch bad for the Brewers last year, Tehran. If you look at his numbers, it wasn't terrible. So, you know, again, this is another arm that, again, if you get stuck in another doubleheader in another bad weather, which is very likely in Ohio, which if you look at the forecast uh, on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, it's it's worse than New York. That's a problem. And then Atlanta for four. Look, I just looked in their week, their a week of schedule. They have rain in the forecast three out of the four days, and it's not forty percent chance. It's around sixty to eighty on those three days, and that's because of the middle of the country that's getting all these tornadoes and these these winter storms and these bad rainstorms. It's trickling down to Georgia, so that's the problem that the Mets are facing. It, again, within the first two and a half weeks of the season. The Mets could have three double headers, and you need a hell of a lot more than five pitchers. You might need eight, maybe nine, depending on you know who is available in the minors that is set up in their you know four or five day span to make sure that they can actually go on that day. So that's what they're looking for. So right now, and Sanders said it, it's kind of a desperation thing. Not really the Mets' fault. It's just circumstance, which sucks. Especially when you're 0 and 4 and you got to play a doubleheader tomorrow. You know, Adrian Hauser is going in game one, and it's looking like like a lot of the, the talk is about Jose Buto uh, being a guy that is going to pitch game two. I would prefer that. The Mets would have an extra roster spot to use, so they'll probably use it for Jose Buto. And that makes sense. So we'll see how it goes. Again, the problem is, and this is the reason why they signed Julio Toronto, I don't think they would have done it. Knowing that the forecast, you got a doubleheader the first week of the season, and then the next two series is outdoor stadiums where the weather is projected to be bad in those two uh, cities. So that's the problem that the Mets have fallen into. And again, you can talk about Lucchese and Buda all you want. You probably need more than those two guys if you really think about it. Because right now you got Adrian Hauser, (laughs) you got... Manaya, you got Severino right now, and then and then what? So you need two spots to fill as well. So it, it's going to be very interesting. You know, you got Quintana as well, but you're probably going to need seven or eight guys over the next week and a half because there's a pretty good chance that the Mets might get rained out once and play a doubleheader in Cincinnati if they can get those two games in on one of the days. Like I was just looking at it, Cincinnati, again, Ohio's weather's worse than New York right now. And Atlanta is projected to have rain. So the, the Mets are in a pickle right now in the first two and a half weeks of the season. They're going to have a ton of rain outs. And you're going to need these starters. You're going to need Tehran. You're going to need Buto, Lucchese. You might even need Mike Vazel. So that's the point. So this is going to be a quick stream, guys. About 10, 15 minutes. The Mets signed Julio Tehran. I believe it's a major league deal. I haven't really got that information yet unless I missed it. But we'll see. <laughs> I'm going to figure it out in a second. But it, it still says just a deal. So I'm trying to figure out something here. All right. Yeah, and again, you know, you don't want to wait for these type of pitchers. You know, they're not they're not great pitchers, or they would be in somebody's rotation right now. The fact of the matter is, throughout a season, you probably need between nine and ten starting pitchers. It's just, it's just how it goes. Maybe you get lucky and may, maybe only need eight. But the the Mets are in a jam right now. Like Sanger was already out of the rotation. McGill was put in the rotation because of an injury and now he's hurt so that's two guys you got to replace with double headers tomorrow with a double header tomorrow and projected double headers over the next two series so and and it is the major league deal thank you robert so it is the major league deal which kind of makes sense because they're probably going to use them over the next couple of days like they might have to put him in a spot like i don't know if he was Throwing already, if you already pitched in the minors, I don't know. So it's a possibility he might pitch in the Cincinnati series just to keep everybody on on a five-day situation here 
that's already in the rotation. So it's a lot to think about. Christopher, there is a doubleheader tomorrow, 12 o'clock, and then the next game starts a half hour after the first game's over. So uh, there you go. So, again, Julio Tehran, again, he's not going to get pushed into the rotation right away. He's just an added depth piece because the Mets are in a real bind right now with the doubleheader tomorrow, no off days. Like, if you check in the schedule, guys, just look. let me just pull up the schedule really quick so I can give you an idea of what the Mets are facing here. With the off days they could have had today or tomorrow, excuse me, and what they were supposed to have on Friday, it's a lot of off, not a lot of off days, and, and that's the problem that the Mets are falling into right now. All right, so let's look. Yeah, they don't have no off day until the 18th of April. So they got... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen games in a row, including one doubleheader that we know of, and that's tomorrow against Detroit. So we have all those games with no off days, and a possibility that we could have back-to-back -back series of doubleheaders because Cincinnati has bad weather, and then Atlanta is possible rain three out of the four days of that series. So uh, Martinez is probably coming up because you got to remember, guys, there's a rule. If you option a guy who's on your 40-man, they have to be there for at least 10 days. So if you go back to opening day, it's only what? It's six, seven days. So he's prob it's probably the Cincinnati series, but most likely it's going to be the Atlanta series where J.D. Martinez is going to make his um, appearance for the first time. So we can't do nothing about that. So uh, there's a possibility he'll come back during the, the Atlanta series. Because if you're really looking to see, I'm going to just check it right now. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So if it's the 10-day period, he can come back the second game of the Cincinnati series. But I probably would think, since he's in Florida, the shorter trip is to Atlanta. That's what I probably think they would do. So you'll probably see J.D. Martinez in Atlanta as his first time uh, in a Mets uniform. So once again, guys, quick stream here, just giving you some breaking news. Julio Tehran is a New York Met, a major league deal, an added depth piece because of the circumstances with injuries with the Mets rotation and the possible bad weather over the next couple of series that can cause him to have multiple doubleheaders within a week span, and that's why they needed this extra arm because you're probably going to use Buto and Lucchese and possibly Tehran and Mike Vazel over the next week and a half because of all the rain possibilities and the cancellations, postponements, and doubleheaders. So with that said, Julio Tehran is a Met. We'll see how it works out. We'll see if we get the update on who's going to be the starter for Game 2. Adrian Hauser is the starter for Game 1. There's some speculation and talk on X that it could be Jose Buto in game two. The Mets get when you have a doubleheader, you get to add an extra roster spot to that roster for the two games. So Jose Buto, whoever's the pitcher, is going to be that added, added roster spot. So with that said, everybody have a good day. No Mets baseball two days in a row, but you get – a doubleheader tomorrow. First game's at 1210. I will be at City Field tomorrow. Uh, if Wi-Fi is actually working in the suites, I'll do a little, I'll do a quick pregame while Chris will be running things on that pregame show. Uh, I'll make an appearance really quick. Um, if I, you know, am drinking some drinks and food because I'm in a suite, don't mind it. Just know that I'll try to do my best to uh, uh, be a part of the show tomorrow. And tomorrow, guys. Around 7.30 or so, the Mets Roundtable is back. Now, unfortunately, Nelson uh, took a step back with his YouTube channel. So we had to do a replacement. And I'm not going to tell you who it is yet. But you guys will know the voice and know the name once we show him a part of the next roundtable for 2024. It's a guy that you probably know. He is very, very vocal. And very, very known on Twitter or X. He's in a lot of Mets spaces on X. He calls WFAN. 
a lot. And you'll see who it is tomorrow night. The first Mets roundtable of the season for 2024. New guy that's going to be a part of me, Hayden, and Chris. The replacement for Nelson will be the guy that you'll see tomorrow and you'll hear from tomorrow. And once the stream goes up, you'll have an idea when you see his new logo that we put together for him. And you'll probably understand the name and location, and you'll understand who it is. So once again, guys, Julio Tehran is a Met. We'll see how it goes. See who pitches game two and probably in a few hours. With that said, everybody have a good day. Stay safe. Let's go, Mets. I'll see you tomorrow, guys. See you next time.